All right, everybody, welcome back. Hello, you will not see my lovely face in this particular podcast, but you will hear my lovely voice. Welcome once more to another video podcast of Alexandra Mayer's Live Painting Edition. And if you would like to check out my other artwork, you can always visit alexandraoriginals.com. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It's not quite Thanksgiving yet, but it will be tomorrow. And I am very thankful this particular holiday. I hope many of you out there are as well. Now tonight I will be putting together a new painting, which I hope to complete in one sitting tonight. But this is a failed painting. This is something, this was an idea I had for something. Um, it did not, I just never really was as passionate about the idea as I initially thought I would be. So I abandoned the painting and this particular canvas has just been sitting, looking ugly for a, a little while now. And I am somebody who does not believe in wasting art materials, okay? Um, I actually was in a relationship with someone not too long ago who also was an artist. And, it, you know, even though that, that relationship didn't work out, what I will say is that he did instill a pretty good, fairly new habit within me when it comes to not being tolerant to the waste of art supplies. Because when it comes to art supplies, whether um, it's, it's something that you started and didn't finish, or um, maybe you are working on a piece of art and you have leftover art supplies, never just throw them out because you just never know when you're going to have an idea. You never know when something is going to want to manifest out of the ether. And those extra art supplies that you were going to waste might come in handy. So just a tip, just a thought. But I just um, tonight got the urge to work on something new. So I'm going to recycle this canvas into something new. Probably something with a little bit of a whimsical theme because I'm in a little bit of a whimsical mood tonight. I'm feeling really good actually. And uh, let's see, what can we talk about while I'm getting started here? Well, for those of you who follow my Twitter, I'm sure that you've noticed there is quite a uh, disturbing situation that I've taken note of and that I've made a little bit of commentary in regards to, but the situation has to do with uh, the element of white privilege and also the element of it simply not being okay to be inappropriate as an adult around minors and children, whether it be for you, you know, a short period of time or an extended period of time. You, you know, we do have certain laws and legislation for a reason. And it's to protect those who may not always be in a position of power or in a position to speak up when they're being harmed. So I'm not going to get really into the issues so much that I have been tweeting about especially over the past, I'd say, two days or so. But I do encourage all of you on Twitter to follow me at Alex Mayers Live. And um, there's a mainstream Hollywood actress and director, very talented woman, who I think you should probably follow as well if she um, accepts your follow at least. And it's an actress known as Nicole Eggert. Um, like I said, I'm not going to get too into the situation tonight, but just send Nicole Eggert some positive thoughts, some positive energy, and some positive words. Because 
I've been aware of her situation for, I'd say a bit over a year now, but I thought the situation had already come to a close. It's actually interesting because I was talking to a friend of mine who actually is the one who reacquainted me with the severity of the situation and the fact that the situation is still going on. But I was telling a friend of mine, I was like, yeah, I, I would have thought that situation would have been wrapped up long ago. I thought it was pretty obvious and apparent what had happened back in the 1980s, which is when this particular issue that I'm speaking of began. But apparently the situation has not wrapped up yet. And I feel the only reason that the situation has been condoned has been due to an element, which I do speak on fairly um, routinely, an element in society known as white privilege. So um, I had the domain for a bit, but I wasn't sure what exactly I wanted to do with it. I knew I wanted to turn it into like a news magazine about some issues in society. But make sure all of you do visit whiteprivilege.exposed www.whiteprivilege.exposed um, because for those of you who are not aware white privilege is not a racist concept it's an element on earth within our society within our world within our actions every day at least in America white privilege is not racist white that, that you know just discussing the concept in fact I personally feel that the concept of white privilege is no different than elements of the weather which could kill you blizzards tornadoes hurricanes I mean just because you live in an area where there's not where, where there's no tornadoes um, does that mean that you don't know about them or talk about them or know to um, get into a place of safety if a tornado occurs you know not just weather but earthquakes you, you know just because you may live in an area of the country where there's no earthquakes does that mean that you're not going to discuss earthquakes or talk about all the detrimental effects of earthquakes no so you can't pretend that things like white privilege don't exist because they do just as elitism does and whatnot and really white privilege it's all rooted in misogyny and quite a few other things but it's not racist to discuss it's something that needs to be discussed more so white privilege exposed will be a website for a sort of video blog news magazine that yours truly will be the host of and um, just in life, when I notice elements of white privilege, I'm going to talk about it. You don't even have to be white to benefit from white privilege. Not at all. Not at all. For years, Bill Cosby benefited from white privilege. Sure did. But in the end... White privilege didn't protect him. But ironically, the same white privilege that didn't protect Bill Cosby, as of current, at least from my perspective, is protecting a Hollywood actor. I don't feel like naming him at the moment, but many of you know him from a very popular television show known as Charles in Charge. So that's something that I will be commentating on over the next week or so, I'm sure. But make sure that you do look at a lot of the tweets that I favorite on Twitter in regards to the situation. Make sure that you do your research, your own research on the situation. Look at the press conferences, the videos, everything that's been posted on YouTube in regards to the situation because in no way, shape, or form 
should a 14 year old girl under any circumstances have to interact with an adult man who's in his late 20s in a way that is inappropriate to all that she is being that she's a minor should never happen that's why we have certain laws oh, you know it really is ironic that um, I'm someone who in the past worked in the adult entertainment industry but today I'm so concerned when it comes to just just elements of society that are that that should be common sense that that really shouldn't even be um, put under, under under the umbrella of morality but just common decency <laughs> so you, you know it goes to show um, life's a journey it truly is all right so I just wanted to prime this a little bit and like I said, I want to create tonight a little bit of a whimsical, you know, sort of painting. I'm not sure exactly what this painting is going to be at the moment, but it's going to be something cool. And I do want to thank anyone who is watching, listening, joining me this evening. If you hear little squawks in the background, those are my two little parakeets, Sunny and Corey. Whenever I sit and do art, they like to sit on the windowsill behind my easel and stare at me. That is what my birds do. <laughs> I love them. I like, I like animals a lot. I don't like all animals. Not all. Some animals, hmm, I, I, I'm not a fan of. But for the most part, any animal that I personally would I guess encounter I do like let's see so yeah I don't I don't know what this painting exactly is going to be I'm not sure I'm not sure but I think it's going to be I don't know maybe a face maybe a person I don't know maybe that's what I want to make a person maybe a uh fairy tale character or a fantasy kind of character I don't know let's see what pops out so let's see what else can I talk about well you know what I'm very impressed with Gabrielle Union very impressed with her as of this evening I don't know if those of you out there follow the news or follow the news at least on Twitter, but the beautiful and talented and socially conscious Gabrielle Union, it seems, was walked off of America's Got Talent. Why? Because of racism and white privilege yes apparently the mainstream uh, comedian and talk show host known as Jay Leno not someone who I ever have been particularly too impressed with as a side note but apparently Jay Leno made a rather racist joke in regards to people of Asian descent I believe it was Koreans specifically. Um, I haven't taken a look at exactly what the joke was about, but it was obviously something that was a racially sensitive topic and Gabrielle Union took a stand. She made a, an official report, which I think is great. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people say I look like Gabrielle Union a little bit. My mom in particular, 
when uh, I was living on the West Coast and I hadn't been back home for years, my mom would watch everything Gabrielle Union was in because she reminded her of me. So thank you, Gabrielle Union, for keeping my mom company <laughs> while I wasn't living in her area. But um, yeah, I consider Gabrielle Union like, you know, extended family. <laughs> she probably wouldn't, ex you, you know, say the same about me, but that's how I feel about her. You know, I grew up watching her in movies. You know, she's a beautiful person. Seems like she's really nice. Very professional. But yeah, so um, she made a report and uh, I guess something happened. I don't know if she was let go from the show or if she um, walked off. She probably just walked off. But maybe she was let go. Who knows? But she probably didn't want to be there if she got to hear, you, you know, freaking racist supposed jokes all the time maybe she's very sensitive to that maybe she just is you know I was extremely sensitive to racist jokes and whatnot um, for many years and part of the reason why I'm delving into comedy myself right now is to overcome some of that sensitivity um, because Certain things should be tolerated. Certain things shouldn't be tolerated. Uh, but still, I mean, that was a professional environment when I think about it. You know, they're catering to mainstream America on that thing. So it, it just seems like, I, I don't know. I, I, I still have to research the situation, but it just looks like yet another element of white privilege. So that'll probably be a podcast that I do. Yeah. Ah, oh, racism. It's something you have to tackle. You know, a lot of comedians, they do um, tackle the issue of racism. Not to, you, you know, make it okay or to condone it, but to put it in our minds and to make us realize that we all do have to treat each other the way that we would want to be treated. We all do have to abide by the golden rule. You know, there are certain things that are funny, but then there's things that just aren't and that are hurtful. And you have to think about, okay, who who's hearing me? Who's listening to me? You, you know? So, that's something that I'll be talking about soon. I have so many video podcasts coming up. Just keep in mind, sometimes I take a while to um, churn things out, certain projects out, because I do have not just two, but three jobs as of current. I'm not going to tell y'all where I work, because, you know, I don't want to be stalked, but, <laughs> but I'm a busy person. I'm a very busy person, so I wish I could, you know, maintain more of a regular schedule when it comes to my activism and advocacy and whatnot, but I can't. I can't. Not as of current. Maybe towards summer of next year. I'm excited about 2020 because I'm going to be doing quite a bit of traveling. Yes, I will be. Yes, I will. I have a trip coming up, actually. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right, so let me take a look and see if anyone's in the chat. Let's see. <laughs> Someone in the chat says, I wish I had white privilege. Kevin Spacey. I don't know what you meant by Kevin Spacey, but oh, that no, I was not talking about Kevin Spacey. No. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Happy Thanksgiving to all. I saw some sort of um trend or something that uh, was on Twitter that said that there's a war on Thanksgiving. Um, I don't think that there's a war on Thanksgiving. 
I don't know if Trump was trying to say that there is a war on Thanksgiving, but I don't think that there is. <laughs> um, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe people were talking about um, not condoning um, genocide, racial genocide, because unfortunately that is a theme when it comes to the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what Thanksgiving traditionally at least has been about but just because a holiday has traditionally been about one thing doesn't mean that it can't change and be about something else today okay um, I like the lesson of Thanksgiving because it's a hard lesson <laughs> when it comes to um, trust, maybe, but, uh, it, it's also a lesson when it comes to white privilege and racism, Thanksgiving, it is, but when I think of Thanksgiving, at least the tradition in my family within the community that I live in and within my culture, Thanksgiving, um, really just has to do with family catching up, getting together, taking stock of your life and realizing what you're thankful for, how good you got it, truly, in comparison to many. Makes you think about how maybe you could be a bit more charitable in your life to others. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of thoughts that come to mind when you think about Thanksgiving. At least when I do. But I don't think there's a war on it. I had to uh, run an errand this evening. And while I was standing in line, checking out at the store, I asked a young man standing in front of me. I was like, hey, have you heard about this supposed war on Thanksgiving? And he's like, yeah, I saw it on Twitter. Where is it? <laughs> And I'm like, it's nowhere, it's nowhere. There isn't a war on Thanksgiving. And he was like, yeah, I didn't think that there was. <laughs> I like talking to uh, teenagers here and there just to see, you, you know, what's on their mind, where they're at, what their perception is of the world. Because it's wild. I mean, being a kid nowadays is completely different than it was when I was a kid. Not to overly age myself, but I'm 40. I'll be 41 in January. So, you know. You know. Ugh, I wouldn't want to be a teenager again for anything in the world. I, I mean, nowadays, it's, it's just not how it used to be. Not at all. And it shouldn't be. Times change. Times change. But the kids nowadays, they're, it seems like they are aging quickly. It doesn't seem like they really get to be kids as long as um, people from my generation got to be. But, you, you know, that's a big reason why I think it's very important to bring attention to um, putting a stop to any sort of inappropriate sexual behavior between people who are legal adults and teens because I mean these teens nowadays oh my god it's like there's so many predators out to get them I mean just coming from um, having been an independent investigative blogger for so many years when it comes to issues uh, pertaining to the adult entertainment industry I mean, the way that gr so many just mentally ill grown men target teens, you know? It's like, grow up. Why are you messing with a teen when you're in your late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s even? I mean, it's weird. There's this one... um adult movie reviewer who seems to have a thing for the teens. Teens! I'll tell you, if you're a parent of a teen, 
you better protect that teen because there are predators out there. And you know what? Those of us out there who are concerned about these issues, who may not have children, we need to step up and, you know, fill in the gaps for the parents out there who are busy trying to raise their kid, work a job, especially the single parents. You know, we as single people without kids, we, we need to look at our lives, look at how easy we have it and say, you know what? I am going to be a guardian angel over that potentially vulnerable teen. I'm not going to interfere in their life, but if I see any nasty old man or woman trying to exploit or hurt that teen or affect that teen in a bad way, I'm going to say something and get law enforcement involved. <laughs> and I'm serious. It's because it's, it's horrible. I mean, people don't understand how certain things truly can affect you in the long term. And the people out there who have been predators, whether it was intentional or not, whether you're sorry or not, if you want to have any hope of living a life to where you're not seen as an active predator, a potential predator always, but an active predator, when it comes to light to the public's awareness that you have been inappropriate, you need to say, I'm sorry, society. Something is wrong with me. And not be in denial, you know, blaming everything and everyone, deflecting like a lunatic. I mean, really. And yes, I am talking about that Hollywood actor who um, is involved in the issues surrounding the woman who I would like many of you out there to send some positive thoughts to, Nicole Eggert. I mean, when I think about what happened to that woman, it really bothers me extensively. It really does. Um, when I first heard about the situation, that when I first heard about the situation, I wasn't really surprised considering certain things I always thought about that show anyway, but it just surprised, it surprises me that, um, this particular Hollywood actor isn't doing any prison time. I, I thought that the whole situation would have wrapped up far differently than where it's at right now. So I guess that's why, um, I feel the need to bring some attention to it, but anyway, Welcome to Alexandra Mayer's Live Painting Edition. Um, I'm recycling a canvas. It's going to be a whimsical character of some sort. And I'm just kind of sharing whatever's on my mind as I work on this. Figuring out what it's going to be, who it's going to be, how it's going to be. Hey. <laughs> uh, let's see. I feel like using a bit of teal, just a bit of teal. I'm going to try to finish this in one sitting, as I said. Don't know if that's going to happen, but hopefully it will. I encourage everyone who, um, well, I encourage everyone out there to get into art of some sort. But especially if you've gone through some... You, you, you know, extensive trauma in your life. Express yourself artistically in some way, okay? Because it's really going to help you um, get out whatever emotions it is that you may need to get out. Definitely. I mean, I'll tell you, after really delving into that woman Nicole Eggert story I'm going to be very interested to see anything that she directs in the future or any screenplay she may write or any any movies that she may produce because um for her to have managed to make it to adulthood having 
been a celebrity at such a young age um, and to such a magnitude of which she was and really truly still continues to be. I mean, it would just take the right her, her to be cast on the right series for everyone to fall in love with her again. Seriously. I mean, and keep in mind, this is a woman I've never met. I've never spoken to her. Um, nothing. I just, I, I just remember watching a little bit of the show she was on as a child. And um, I remember all my friends would always talk about her character when it came to what was in style. Because, gosh, when was I familiar with, with the show? Maybe I would say when I was maybe seven to 10 years old, maybe, you know, elementary school, little girl. I just remember I was in um, either Brownies or Girl Scouts. I think it was Girl Scouts at that time, but was it, or was I still a Brownie? I think it was a Girl Scout. But um, I just remember all my peers would talk about how, you know, oh, did you see Jamie on Charles and Charles? Do you see those leg warmers she was wearing or something? Cause it was like the eighties. And um, that's how I remember her. She was like the fashion plate, the, the fashion idol for, I guess, the, the uh, teen girls um, in suburbia. I grew up in Spring, Texas, and I grew up with a lot of girls who looked like Nicole Egger when I really think about it. So, uh, yeah, I, I totally believe her. I just do. Because I know how guys can be. Especially um, of a certain type. Especially of a certain type. Oh, gosh. Um, to the person in the chat, the last name that you mentioned, yes. I just really don't feel like saying his name out loud today. Because I just perceive him as being so freaking negative. Ugh. <laughs> Seriously, he is just negative and so into himself. Oh my God. I mean, ugh. You can just tell when somebody is just like, an energy vampire, you know, someone who just sucks the energy out of a room and who's exhausting to be around. Ugh. That's how I see that particular guy who I don't want to name. You, you can just see it. Ugh. I have like an aversion to that. <laughs> I really do. And by the way, when you're painting, you, you know, a lot of people, they think that they have to have fancy, um equipment or something or supplies um i guess some people use like a wooden palette to paint and stuff i use a paper plate it makes clean up easy you know think of me as today's bob ross i'm like bob ross meets oprah winfrey meets uh <laughs> Uh, quite a few other energies, quite a few. But anyway, whoever's out there watching, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for following my work. And if you are curious as to taking a gander, if you're curious about my other work, you can always visit Alexandra Originals. Dot com. If you're curious about things that are interesting to me, visit Alexandra Mayer's Live. I'm using a sea sponge right now for those of you who are like, what's she doing? I'm just going to kind of smear the color on.
But yeah, if you want to check out my other podcasts, they're all linked up on Alexandra Mayer's Live and alexandramayers.com. If you want to hear some of my original music, you can go to alexandramayersmusic.com. I'm hoping that toward the end of 2020, I can offer a little, um, or not a little, but a few housewares, fun items for you to add to your home. I'll make those available through um, alexandraoriginals.com. Because I just want it to be to where, if you want to be surrounded by all that I have, Alexandra Mares, <laughs> you can be. You know how Martha Stewart has Martha Stewart home? I'm Alexandra Mayer's home. Be an Alex. <laughs> Seriously, you know, I'll tell y'all something funny. Very funny, very, um, very, uh, I, I don't know what to think about it really when I, when I think about it. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a, ironic sort of thing, but uh, as I have been looking into this Nicole Eggert situation, right, I come across a, a, a press conference that was uh, held, on, held and it, it was posted on YouTube, and it was the press conference to where not only Nicole Eggert, but her co-star, a young man known as Alexander Polinsky, they both held a press conference to come forward in regards to their allegations of having experienced um, very inappropriate behavior linked to sexual themes in a professional environment when they were minors, right? So their attorney was Lisa Bloom. And for those of you who don't know, that's Gloria Allred's daughter. So Lisa Bloom totally impressed me. You know, I've heard good things about her. I've heard bad things about her. I don't know a lot about her as of current. I, I don't. But she does seem to try to stand up for women and women's rights, civil rights. And, you know, anyone who is that kind of person, I really admire. You know, and plus, I mean, she's got to be interesting as can be being Gloria Allred's daughter and all. Wow. She's someone I would love to just have a conversation with one day just to listen to what she has to say because I'm sure she is a very powerful presence to be around. But anyways, in the press conference, Lisa Bloom really impressed me with um, a prepared statement she presented the public with when it comes to standing up for people who may, who may be afraid to speak out or who may not even understand what's happening to them because they're children trapped in an abusive situation. But she said the phrase, be an Alex. And she was referring to Alexander Polinsky standing up and standing alongside his co-star, right? But it's so ironic that my name is Alex too, because I was like, hey, you know, I want to stand up against this. You, you know, are you talking to me, Lisa Bloom? You know, of course she wasn't. I'm not that crazy. But it was just interesting. But then I thought about the fact that Nicole Eggert is about to be showcased or featured on this wonderful show that is, I, I suppose, produced and put together by Alexander Rodriguez. The baseball player. I think he's uh, Jennifer Lopez's husband. I, I, I think so. He's a big thing down here in South Florida, at least. But I was like, wow, you know, she's going to be on his show because he is known for helping um, ex-athletes and um, celebrities who may have had a hard time recoup, get their lives together, make a comeback. So I was like, wow, his name's Alex, too. So it's interesting. I feel like Lisa Bloom is really, she, you know, when she's saying be an Alex, you out there, the public, you have more than one choice <laughs> in regards to what kind of Alex you can be like. If you're a baller and you want to speak up against abuse of children, 
you know, if you're a baller, you're a guy, you could be like Alex Rodriguez. If you're a um, sensitive creator actor type, who's a male, who's gone through it all, you can be like Alexander Polinsky, or if you are just hell on wheels, such as I, Alexandra, Mayers, you can be like me, or you can just be like you and be somebody with, you know, a sense of decency and say, hey, let's make these old men take some accountability for having hurt these young teens, these little girls, these teens. Shit. <laughs> oh, it's sickening, isn't it? It is just sickening. It's evil. Satanic, really. It is satanic. Making a woman feel guilty for standing up for herself. I don't think so. People better get with it because guess what? We're entering a matriarchal age. Patriarchy. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Bye-bye, patriarchy. It's over. Modern men don't even want the patriarchy. Because they're like, hey, we know that we, we need some therapy. <laughs> we know that we have messed up a lot in this world. We know that it's time for us to take some accountability. So women, please take the reins. That's what a real man says. He says, women, take the reins. I know I have problems. Help me. Guide me. Lead me. Control me. <laughs> well, maybe not complete control, but... <laughs> Yeah. What am I painting? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I just know it's going to be something whimsical, something fun. It's probably going to be a whimsical creature from a fairy tale realm. For some reason, a lot of whimsy and fairy tale realm things come through me when I paint. I don't know why. Maybe I'm like secretly a little fairy. Maybe I'm a little pixie. Maybe in a previous life I was like a little magical forest wood nymph. All right. But for those of you who are just now joining, if you're late, which is fine because this was not planned, um, this is a canvas that I'm recycling because it was a painting that I just wasn't into completing. So I decided, you know, let me make it something different. So let's see, what else can I talk about? What else can I talk about? Um, oh, if, if only if you can afford it, okay? Um, if you could throw a few dollars to a friend of mine who is um, in the process of rebooting her life, she's known as Melissa Hill. If you could throw her a few dollars on her fundraiser, I have the fundraiser um, linked up on Alexandra Mayer's Live. You can also go to, well, her Twitter, she, she spells her Twitter a little odd. It's M-E-I underscore, wait, what is it? It's M-E-I Hill underscore Raw Talk, I think. <laughs> she, she spells her Twitter in a very odd way. But anyway, um... There's a fundraiser for her. So far, I think that um, about 10% of her target goal has been raised. So, you know, if you can just throw her like $5, $10, that'd be great. 
I will, um, actually somewhere on my Twitter, there is a link to the fundraiser. It's on GoFundMe. It's GoFundMe.com forward slash help hyphen Melissa hyphen move hyphen forward. All right. So if you want to help her move forward in her life, you can. Because everyone needs a little help sometimes. Everyone does. And you know what? You should never be ashamed to ask for help. There were times in my life where I was ashamed to ask for help. And I think about it. In hindsight, I shouldn't have been. I should not have been. So... You know, we all got to be a little kinder to each other. And we have to realize and pay attention to when somebody needs help. And not, look, you know, not always let personal grudges prevent us from, hap from helping someone who's really in need either. You, you know, I am going to talk about this a little bit. I might even do a podcast specifically about this. But you know, y'all know how for a while I was all gung ho about that adult performers actors guild union. I still think it's a good concept, but I'm really disappointed in the leadership of that union because even though the current president of that union had a falling out with um, the girl I'm friends with, known as Melissa Hill, that doesn't really, you know, why does she have to be so mean to her and ex exclude her from things when it's very obvious that Melissa wants to be a part of that world, you know? Why not help her considering that she's transitioning in her life right now? You, you know, I feel like the president of that union has been so blessed. You, you know, why... Is she trying to, I don't know. I don't want to talk about that too much because it's negative, I guess. And this is a positive podcast, but got to be careful how you treat people because life can change in an instant. Really can. Really, truly can. Sometimes what you believe you have, you can find out. Not even five minutes later was never really yours to begin with. Oh. All right, who are you going to be? It's like, I don't know. Who am I? Alexandra, who am I? Hmm. That brush. I guess I'm gonna define a bit of a face. I feel like the face is about ready to come forth. Bring forth my face, Alexandra. Reveal to the world who I am in this painting. You know what? I see you in the chat. You were asking if a certain person is alive or not. Frankly, I couldn't give a damn. Honestly, I don't care. I don't care. That situation is something that has been revealed to be linked directly 
to child trafficking. Okay, it's been linked directly to sex trafficking. That situation is currently in the middle of the Girls Do Porn lawsuits. And the individuals attached to that situation seem to be on the run. I think some have been arrested. So, uh, you know, when it comes to whether a person is dead or alive, I don't care. Because I was saying for a long time and considering everything that I went with, the hell, the hellish experience in itself, um, I, I've been saying for how many years that that dude belonged in jail? I've been saying for how many years that there appeared to be some sort of organized crime attached to that situation? Did anybody really listen to me? No. So, when I look at that situation now, I just kind of sit back and I think to myself, well, should have listened. <laughs> That's why I'm making that podcast about white privilege, because as a black woman, not too many people really listen to me who um, are in positions of power. Not at all. I've actually seen people with the complexion for the protection use my work, present it as their own, and everyone's like, oh, wow, I can't believe that that's happening. And then if I, you know, I, I look back at my archives and I'm like, wow, I was saying that exact thing freaking two years ago. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I just, certain people have been deceased in my mind for such a long time that, uh, whether or not they're actually alive or not in the third dimensional realm, that's not really relative or relevant to me. I don't care. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I'm just kind of sickened by so much in the world at this stage. Like I said, if you want um, to find a hub to, to all my projects and whatnot, just go over to uh, pntlive.net or alexandramayers.com and you can find quite a bit of stuff. Quite a bit. So tomorrow, I'll be putting out the Christmas decorations. Yeah, that is what I will be doing tomorrow. At least I'll get started on it. I might not do it all at once, of course, but you know. I'm actually thinking about um, taking a quick look on Amazon or something later this evening and seeing what kind of Christmas decoration deals they have because, you, you know, every year over here we pretty much put out the same decorations, but, you know, I feel like it'd be nice to add some fresh elements to our normal 
little setup. Um, refreshment. Having some ocean spray tonight. Um, for those of you who are not aware, I have completely cut alcohol and nicotine out of my life completely as of September 26th. So um, I guess I just had a two month anniversary when it comes to that. And it was a good choice for me at this point in my life. I didn't make the decision because of um, anything health related really. I mean, I've noticed improvement in my overall, you know, how I feel day to day, of course, but I made the decision because as I do do my traveling and whatnot, going into uh, 2020, some of the things I plan to do, you know, I'm going to have to be in shape to do. <laughs> uh, and also, honestly, when you're traveling a lot, you don't want to have extra pounds on you. You know, I'm far from being anorexic or anything. Um, where, whatever, however you feel happy about yourself, I think is the weight that you should be. Okay. As long as it, you know it's not killing you in any way, and that means you shouldn't, you know, get yourself into a position to where. You're so skinny that you're unhealthy or that you're over exercising and you're putting yourself at risk for a heart attack because you are lifting too many weights and eating too much protein or, you, you know, you don't want to be so obese that, you know, you're shortening your life either. But um, as far as, you, you know, aesthetics, just overall aesthetics, um, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. I don't think anyone really needs to try to be like anyone that they see on television. I'm actually glad to see television and uh, mainstream advertisers using more models who look like real world people and not people who are, you, you know, fighting for their lives in Hollywood because when you're when you're working in Hollywood and you're young you are fighting for your life <laughs> you, you really are but anyways um I noticed H&M has an ad on Twitter showcasing a woman who is I'd say a little larger than average but she's so pretty and it's good to see her, whoever that woman is. It's a brunette. Whoever she is, it was good to see her because it's good to just realize life happens, weight happens. You can try to f fight the bulge, but if you get tired of fighting, it's okay because the people who are meant to be in your life will be in your life regardless of what you look like. Regardless, when I was younger, I paid too much attention to looks. Do I today? Nope. Not at all. And I don't care what anyone thinks about my look because I personally think I look amazing. <laughs> I know I do. But, you know, I, I did see someone insult me online. I probably shouldn't talk about it on here or bring to anyone's attention that I even noticed it, but someone brought it to my attention and I thought it was the weirdest insult. Actually, the person was saying that I didn't have any eyelashes and I was like, what? I don't have any eyelashes. Of course I have eyelashes. They're very thin. Yes, but I don't wear a lot of makeup. At least I don't nowadays, because I'm not out to impress anybody. <laughs> but yeah, I, and I was thinking, I think my eyelashes are actually 
they might be a little bit more sparse than average, but then it occurred to me, whoever said that is not used to being around women or the only women that they're used to seeing and being around are women who wear fake eyelashes. That's it. So it's like, if you think that me having thin eyelashes is unattractive, then, you know, that's, that's on you. But it's also, um, it also makes me question the person's sexuality, really. And the person probably is not into women. And the reason I say that is because the style of makeup that I'm seeing a lot of young girls who are trying to be glamorous wear nowadays, that style of makeup actually was forged and is rooted in the drag world, the world of theatrical drag queens. And um, if that particular super contoured, big eyebrows, super thick lashes, um, super defined makeup, if that's what you're into, that means that you have a fetish for drag makeup, which is fine. But just remember the drag makeup did start on men, not women. Um, have I ever worn drag makeup? Yeah, when I worked in the adult entertainment in industry, of course. But I mean, half the time when they would do my makeup and I would look at myself in the mirror, I was thinking to myself, who is that? That's not me. You know, I like presenting to the world my face, me. Because if I meet somebody <laughs> and if by chance I fall in love with them and we decide that we're gonna get it on, when I wake up next to them the next day, I want them to see the exact same woman that they initially went to sleep with the night before. When you're a woman who's running around wearing all these spanks, um, overly, on, overly contoured makeup, hair extensions, fake nails, fake everything, you're not, and I'm not against you doing it, but just keep in mind that you might need to explain your look to the man before he sees who you are without the enhancements. <laughs> I don't want to have to do that. I just want the guy to be like, oh, slightly above average African-American woman. She's in pretty good shape. Works for me. That's what I want the guy to think, Who, whoever ends up being the next guy that I date. <laughs> yeah. Am I looking right now though? No. Not at all. Not at all. All right. Believe it or not, we're getting close to the final stretch of this painting. Believe it or not, we are. Believe it or not, we are. Remember that show, Greatest American Hero? I used to like that theme song. I think that was the name of the show. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. That's a good song. Who could it be? Believe it or not, it's just me. pavement. Not sure if I have any charcoal though. Hmm. That's okay if I don't. Actually, we're going to let the face part dry a little bit. And uh, let's see. So here's what I got so far.
Let's see, what else can I tell, talk about while I uh, work on this? What else is on my mind? I want to save a lot of what I want to talk about for my other podcast. Oh, gosh. Um, 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 um. I'm obsessed with my birds still. Corey and Sunny. They're such happy little birds. <laughs> they really are. It's, it's interesting to watch parakeets um, when they're a couple. I mean, it's interesting to watch them as single birds, too. But um, those of you out there who follow me, you know the story of Sunny and Corey. But they are just such a joy to watch. Because they're just in love with each other. <laughs> they really are. They really are. And that's nice. That's sweet. Sunny, the female bird, she's pretty self-sufficient. It's it's amazing to watch her. She has her little daily routine for the most part. Um, Corey, Corey just uh, <laughs> he's obsessed with her. Um, she beats him up a little bit. Actually, I have to separate them sometimes. Because she's a little bit more aggressive than he is. But that's okay. That's okay. But they're doing really well. taking better care of the animals on the planet before Earth just completely rejects humanity <laughs> as a whole because a lot of people don't think about it this way but the Earth itself is a biological organism okay which I believe is part of an even larger biological organism I've always kind of wondered if like our known universe is actually the um, insides of an even larger being. You, you know, like what if within us, within our bloodstream, we have little Earths and people are having little lives on little Earths within us. You, you know, it's kind of trippy to think about, of course, but still. Um, You know, I think the Native Americans, 
they have it right when it comes to their spirituality and how they view the earth as a living thinking organism really but uh For those of us who may follow or believe in Christianity, I think that we need to broaden our minds just a bit more when it comes to that, broaden our perspective, how we look at things. tell y'all what one of my favorite animals is as far as exotic animals not anything I want as a pet but just animals an animal that I like panda bears I love panda bears and I think that they need our help more <laughs> because they're so they have a certain innocence about them all animals do but especially the panda All they want to do is eat their freaking bamboo. That's really all the pandas want to do. And we just keep bothering them. They're like, why are you bothering us? And why are you so obsessed with us? Just pandas. <laughs> I used to have a dog named Panda. But she passed on. I miss her. I really do. She was a shit Sam. <laughs>
I will be Gabrielle. Yes, I will. Like, yes, that is me. That's me. podcast actually that I plan to uh, put together in regards to a recent issue that I noticed pertaining to race and perception and um, a person's self view even when or within the adult entertainment industry there's something that i noticed that um no one from what i can see really has spoken much about um and it doesn't you know it's not anything important to overly important to talk about but it's just interesting um what a certain person i saw say so that's coming up people gotta stop with this racism shit. they really do You know, it's starting to become apparent, too, like, who's really behind it, you know, and the people who are behind it, they're still, they're trying to deflect, especially lately, but I see them. I see them. You know, some people are like, ew, don't talk about racism, that's being divisive. No, it's not. It's making the world a better place for the children when you talk about it because when you don't talk about it it goes unchecked and people get hurt their feelings are hurt their sense of self gets hurt you know I dealt with so much racism over the past few years just in regards to the name calling never thought as an adult I'd have to contend with that sort of shit you know it's weird but I don't have a tolerance for it. And I also don't like, um, I mean, there's so many things I don't like, <laughs> but I really don't like um, I don't I don't like when people who are obviously racist try to put on airs like they don't notice race, but all of their behavior points towards definite um a definite need to dominate others you, you know I, it's just ugh, it just grosses me out totally grosses me out this is coming along nicely by the way very nicely happy with this meaning this painting I guess this podcast is coming along nicely too Everything's coming along nicely. <laughs> I'm silly. Oh, I am very silly.
another thing I am um, just when I was glancing at the Gabrielle Union situation, another thing that I noticed that they were saying was that there were accusations about her hairstyles being too culturally, quote unquote, black. I was very upset by that. So I'm going to see what hairstyles she rocked. And I guess like the next few video podcasts that I do, I'm going to wear her hairstyles. <laughs> Just as like, you know, me being a Gabrielle Union fan. You know, a lot of people think that because I've enjoyed a minor level of celebrity myself that I'm not or am not capable of being a fan of people. To the contrary, I'm a big fan of quite a few people. I don't always make it known who they are, but there's just certain people I'm a fan of. I'd say I'm a Nicole Eggert fan. She's not anyone that I think I would ever hang out with in person or anything. Not anyone I would ever be like, oh yeah, that's my friend. No. But I like being a fan of strong women, so I'm a fan of hers. It's funny. I saw people on Twitter being like, oh, I bet that woman Nicole put her up to that. No, I've never spoken to that woman in my life. And there's no need for me to ever speak with her because she's just somebody that went through something that I believe she is telling the total truth about. And more people need to believe her, more decent people. You know, it's funny, a lot of these people who are uh, into Trump and whatnot, they like to say that if you're not a Republican, you're not decent. It's like, really? <laughs> okay. Whatever. Decency is really more so than anything about being nice and understanding. And um, looking at a situation for what it is. <sighs> a lot of people think I'm very hard on um, parents. Yeah, I am, because somebody has to be. I don't believe a lot of people who are parents should be because they're not thinking properly. And I guess some of you watching or listening to this are saying, well, who are you, Alexandra, to define what's thinking properly versus what isn't? Well, you don't have to listen to me. I'm not anybody. I'm just a woman who's currently in suburbia painting a picture. But, what I do know is that when it comes to my thoughts on children, I found that more of the younger generation agrees with me than anybody else. <laughs> because my thought is, once you have a child, your entire life at that point should be specifically dedicated to that child. Otherwise, don't have a kid. There's no need. No need at all. You know, and you're like, that's, what do you mean no need? It's selfish not to have children. Well, I think it's more selfish to have children and to endanger them. Part of the reason I don't have children is because I know what kind of person I am. And I know that 
And I know no single mom intends to be a single mom, but I knew what the odds were. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't willing to try. Not at that point in my life. Today, do I wish I was a mom? At times, I do. At times. Other times, I'm glad I'm not. Do you mean um, the anti-porn site? Yeah, I've seen it. I'll tell you how I feel about pornography nowadays. Um, I think that the people producing it are not ethical. I would not recommend it to anybody. Do I think it should be obliterated as an art form? No. But do I think that um, it's a responsible or viable industry today? No, I don't. Um, do I think it's a drug? Depends on who you are. Depends on who you are. Depends on who you are. You know, there's actually so much adult content out there right now, they could kind of stop making it all together. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't want to hear that, but they could. There's so much out there. If it's something that you're watching, you know, on a daily basis, I would say that you're addicted and that you might want to reevaluate who you are, why you're doing that, all that kind of stuff. Um, but different people are different ways. Different people are different ways. I mean, just the industry itself, in my opinion, is just far too linked to criminal activity. All right, that's how I feel about it. I feel like, um, Anytime you have a situation to where people are actively trying to silence you if you opt to tell the truth about a situation, then you know something's wrong. 
that's why it's not something that I would say um, I would recommend for anyone to go into. I wouldn't even recommend anyone pose for Playboy, really. N none of that. Now, keep in mind, I am a 40-year-old woman at this stage in my life. <laughs> but, uh, seriously, I just... Um, It's just how I feel. I just think that, um, if you want to be naked in front of people, you know, can't stop you. But do you really want everyone to know what you look like naked? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um, it, it just depends on the person. I'm glad I have photos of, you know, me and my prime, definitely, because I can look back and be like, wow, I was a little too skinny then, but, um, <laughs> I don't know, knowing what I know now, I never would have gone into that world, but I didn't know then what I know now, did I? You know, everybody goes through things, everybody shifts, evolves, changes, morphs. That's why apologies are important when I think about it. Because sometimes people do change. It's rare. But sometimes people do change. Or they become possessed by something else that operates their body and nobody pays attention or notices. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe. But, yeah. That's why apologies are important. Because if a person truly has changed and they have evolved and someone from their past approaches them and they're like, you know, you really hurt me or negatively affected me in my life at such and such a time, you know, you should be able to say, wow, I'm sorry. I, I, I was a different person at that stage and it was wrong, if it was wrong, you know. It takes a lot to give an apology, but when an apology is warranted, you should do it. And if the person needs a public one, just give it to them. Some people are like, well, an apology, that might hurt my reputation. And it could also help your reputation. At least in my opinion, it could. You know, I don't see why you wouldn't want to apologize. Especially if something that you've done is like so bad and so obviously bad that there's no getting around it. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about something without talking about it. I know, I know. So anyway, let's talk about this painting a little bit. Working on the eyes now. Um, I'm real weird when it comes to being particular about the eyes. I tend to take a long time, so if anyone's bored, sorry. But I should be done shortly. Let's see what time is it. I'm actually finishing this a little bit faster than I thought I would. You know what? I think um, that would be a good idea for Playboy at this age. Be more of a lingerie brand than what it is. You know, close that mansion. That mansion, you, you know, it's that's white privilege right there. You want to talk about white privilege, let's talk about that Playboy Mansion. I'm glad whoever's in the chat brought that up. Who are you? Spade and Billards? Billiards? Hi. Welcome to Alexandra Mayer's Live. But anyway, yeah. Um, that mansion essentially has been the local brothel for Hollywood. I mean, I know a lot of people don't want to look at it that way, but that is what it's been. 
and it's strange that that's been allowed to even be out so in the open you know people just doing all kinds of stuff but you know that's white privilege I mean imagine if Hugh Hefner had been black there wouldn't have been a Hugh Hefner or a Playboy <laughs> not at all not at all I mean, that is in your face pimping. In your face pimping. Hi, I'm Hugh Hefner, and I live in this mansion with all my girlfriends. <laughs> Seriously. that polygamy you know it's it's interesting how um, people are like oh no not polygamy all those poly all those polygamists in Africa please they're right they're right here in America Utah Utah and when the kids get of age they run away and run south to Las Vegas <laughs> It's true. No one wants to talk about that. But it's true. Group relationships. They're more common than you think. Not for me. But for, they are just more common than you think. They work for some people. Not me. me at all I'm not good in groups at all I'm, I'm kind of a solo person a lone wolf <laughs> a, a solo eagle flying through the sky soaring by myself because uh, I, I guess because I get annoyed very easily People were like, why is she single? Why is she so by herself? Because I'm happier this way. Feels good.
Well, Larry Flint, you don't have to, is he, is he even still alive? He's in that wheelchair. He can't do too much. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> I'm not laughing that he's in a wheelchair, or am I? Um, yeah. Yeah. But he's another example of white privilege when I think about it. Larry Flint, if he was black. No way, Jose. I mean, you know who, like, one of the biggest examples of white privilege is ever? Well, two I can think of. Dennis Hoff. That's one. But you know who else? Charlie Sheen. I think they, I think part of the reason that they lowered that, uh, sentence of knowingly spreading HIV in California to, uh, what did they lower it to? A misdemeanor or something? Not a misdemeanor, but, uh, I don't know, I have to look it up, but they, but they lowered the penalty, and I think part of it might have been because of Charlie Sheen. <laughs> I, woo, that was, that was quite the, uh, situation, wasn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to post some more comedy routines from Club Chroma Key. <laughs> yeah, apparently people think I'm a professional comedian because um, of the clips that I already posted. I thought it was kind of obvious that, you know, I was just messing around, but hey, maybe that's my new calling. All right, let's see. you doing? My name's Sonny and I live here. <laughs> <laughs> 